Hello everybody. So, finally hit my first failure point on the sprinkler. Was pulling it through some of this long uh, grass. Well, actually I let my dad pull it through since, you know, I was kind of being a baby about it. And uh, the cables let loose and uh, let everything droop. So, I'm going to be changing those ends over to uh, flanges. Uh, so I can disassemble this a little bit easier. But yeah, once one cable let loose, the other one let loose, and then it uh, dropped. So those were working good, these uh, pipe couplings. But as you can see, uh, the eye bolt there, that's what started to bend when it was being forced through. But uh, at least it gave me some good data here. So now I know what type of forces are being applied to this upper uh, beam here. So uh, it's good to know. Also check out how balanced this is right now. With just the one boom, one finger. <laughs> when that one side did break, pulled everything over. Luckily this side was uh, offset where it uh, popped on that. So I will be having to add some angular reinforcements down here to stop anything like that from happening and causing something more catastrophic. But this is early development and this is exactly how I tr yeah, usually troubleshoot to a final product because I'll sometimes build a lot of this stuff out of thinner material than I probably should just to kind of witness what failure points happen. Oh and the other thing that had to be changed is uh, this did kink so it didn't make that direction. We just add some 90s and stuff. So once it's under pressure, it's a okay though. I had another failure point, but uh, mostly this is because I didn't put a disconnect once it hit the end. I was going to test this out eventually, just not this soon. I accidentally had it go a little too far. Check out how much torque this sucker had. Enough to push that Crosby clamp right up to the other one like that. And the frame was already a little bit bent. Now it's got quite a bit more, so it's actually starting to pull this in, bend it up. Biggest surprise to me though. <laughs> it pulled this down. It had popped the belt. I put the belt back on just because uh, I don't know why it was a hot day. I'd seen that and I went, oh no. Then, hold this goddamn cable right down in there. That's going to be a real pain in the butt to get that back out. But, uh, now I know I'm going to need more than just a disconnect to stop the power from transferring there. I'm going to have to actually have a slip clutch probably up here. Thinking right on that pulley. That'll be a later date. But uh, it'll have a disconnect when it hits the end. Now I know how much torque this thing puts out since it was quite destructive. And that was in second gear. It actually has one gear down from that that makes it go slower. And uh, it produced that much torque off of a little Harbor Freight pump out there. Let's see if I can zoom up on that. That's what was feeding it. It's that little pump right out there. It's a three inch line, three inch pump. And uh, had the angle set really shallow up here. It averaged about 40 revolutions a minute, this uh, big bar, which is quite fast considering how big it is. But uh, yeah, I'd say it's a uh, half a mile torque. Their point made those little screw holes, which just bent and crushed, I mean, holy crap. <laughs> 